Hey guys, this is Aaron Lewis and in today's video I thought that I would do a video letting people know what <laughs> birds are like before you actually go out and get one. So this video is a must watch, okay? Keep watching. Alright, so one of the must to know things before you go and get a bird is how long that bird is actually going to be alive for because you've got to know that when you get your bird, you're committing to it. The budgies, parakeets, you know, the smaller birds, they usually have a shorter lifespan, anywhere from 5 to 15 years. Most people's budgies live till 5, unless it's fed a high nutrition diet, such as pellets and vegetables. That's what I try and feed mine. They do eat vegetables, not so much the pellets, but yeah. Stop. Um, and then you have your cockatiels and conyers. Here's a cockatiel. He's around four years old at the moment, and sorry about that, he keeps trying to plug my earring. But they live a little bit longer, 15, I mean, 8 to maybe 30 years, once again, depending on how well you take care of them and whether they're on a good diet. And then you do have your much bigger birds, such as macaws, so stuff. Then you have your macaws and cockatoos that live in, they've been recorded to live up to 50 years old, so they're probably not more. The young adults are more for experienced people who have a hobby in having birds and want to keep a bird for that long. Because as I said, once you commit to a bird, you're committing to it for life. You can't just get a bird for a year and decide, I don't want you, I'm getting rid of you. Because that's like getting rid of your baby, your child. You wouldn't do it. Well, some people might. But you just wouldn't get rid of a child so long as you get rid of a little bird. It's cruel. Because they kind of bond with you <laughs> in that period of time, so it's not right to say, hey, you're boring, I don't like you anymore, goodbye. Also, birds do need a lot of attention, so if you are someone who works a lot and you're rarely at home, I would not recommend getting a bird for you, because they do need their attention based on them. You can't just get a bird and just sit it there as a piece of decor that you just change water around and feed it daily. That's not how they work. You do need to interact with them daily. They're like a little human or a dog. They need interaction. I would personally recommend one to two hours every day to spend with your bird. Now, if you do have a bird that you have more than one, such as if you have a couple budgies or a couple cockatiels, it's not really like necessary to spend that time with them daily because they have each other to bond with. Like, I have my budgies, I have four of them, they have each other, so I don't really need to spend that much time with them, but I do interact with them for about half an hour every day, but I don't just change their water and just leave them there, I do interact with them. So it is very important to interact with your bird. They do like to be played with, they like to walk around, they like to have free flight. My birds are let out all day long, and I just pack them in at night time because in the wild, birds have free flight. They can fly wherever they want. But in a cage, they're, they're just confined. It's like a jail cell. It's like if you spent your whole life just living in your room. It'd be horrible and it's just not a nice way to live. So you've got to really think about what you are doing when you get your bird. Is it just going to sit there or are you actually going to give it attention? So that is a very important factor in getting a bird. And if you don't give it the attention they need, it can lead to stress, which causes feather plucking, and can lead in more horrific things like death. And you don't want that. You don't want to wake up and see a dead bird in your cage. It's just not a nice thing to see. So I would highly recommend, if you're not going to spend the time with it, or if you don't have more than one bird, to bond with him or her, don't get a bird. When Chico, my cockatiel, never used to really get our attention, he used to squawk, just squawk all day. And it was ear throbbing, it was so loud that now that I've hand tamed him, hand tamed him and he's out more, he's very silent. The only time that he really makes like little chirping noises is when he's sitting on his perch and he's just feeding or just having fun and playing with the toy that I have on there. But apart from that, he doesn't really squawk loudly, so they are more noisier. 
if you don't give them that required attention. And that's because they're trying to get your attention to come over to them and recognize them. Another thing a lot of people don't realize or seem to take into consideration is the cost that actually goes into first purchasing a bird and then keeping it. Because you need to buy a high protein diet for it, pellets aren't cheap, seed option is like $3 compared to paying out like $25 for a bag of pellets. So they do cost a lot and then you need to afford bedding for them. Well it depends what kind of cage you have for them and whether you want to put like sawdust bedding in. I know in my cages I have sawdust bedding and they go down and play with it sometimes and it keeps the smell down from their poo. So that's what I do. But the cost when you first buy your bird, you've got to think because you need to get the perches, you need to get the toys, and the most important thing is the cage size. Please, if you're going to get a little cage like this, just don't get it or don't get a bird. They need space, they need room to move, they need space to spread out their wings. Also, don't get the cages that have a dome roof or like house shape because it's just a waste of space. A bird's not going to be able to spread its wings in a little house shape thing like this. They need space to move around. So I would recommend for your like parakeets, budgies and cockatiels, maybe a cage size like this. Now, it is important that if you can afford to get a bigger cage than that, do it. Bigger is always better when it comes to birds because they do like their space. As I said before, they live in the wild, they can fly wherever they want. And putting them in the cage for their entire life is just cruel. And it's even crueler if they're in a cage like I showed you before. Because they have no room to move around and it's just not right. So that is one of the most important things to take into consideration when you go out and purchase your bird and cage. You want to get the biggest cage you possibly can for your bird because it's better for them. Birds do not like children so if you're planning on getting your bird for your child that is range from 1 anywhere to 10 or 12 it's, birds just feel uncomfortable when they're around children. They just know that they're fast, children are unpredictable. They could grab your bird and they could hurt it or even worse, kill it if they squeeze it too hard. I watch videos on YouTube of little children introducing their birds and they're holding them like this and the bird's trying to escape but it's not allowed to and they're just showing it, they're wiggling around like this like it's a toy. Please do not get your bird, your kid a bird, not your bird a kid, it's just, it's just cruel and they don't know how to take care of it properly. If you're going to be there and hold it for them and teach them how to work, like hold it and stuff, then that's fine, but just don't buy them a bird and let them deal with it on their own until they're at an age where they actually know how to take care of a bird and like maybe from 14 and from there on but 10 or lower 12 or lower is just people they just don't know how to take care of a bird they will end up killing it or harming it so it's safer if you just don't get your child a bird i know they might want it maybe if you get them like a mice or rats guinea pigs guinea pigs are a good child like child friendly animals so maybe get them one of them just don't get them a bird because birds are actually very delicate and not only that the birds bites actually hurt the budgies bites don't really hurt but um when my mum first tried to grab chico here she actually made her bleed their bites are very strong they actually dig right into your skin so I don't know whether a you getting a bird for your child or even if you have a bird and you have a child, make sure you watch your bird around your child because you don't want your bird hurting your child and your child doing something in reflex that will also hurt your bird. So that is very important. Please take note of that. Also, birds are very loud animals. They aren't quiet. I sit out in my pergola and I hear birds squawking from trees in the distance. There's, they're no different from when you have a bird in your house. If anything, it makes it louder because the smaller areas makes it echo throughout your house. 
and it just pierces your eardrums. So that, so that is another thing to take into consideration. They are noisy, so if you just got a new baby and you want to, because I know babies are very fragile, you know, any loud noise can wake them up screaming. My sister had babies and yeah, she always made sure they were very quiet whenever they were in the house sleeping. Even just a door shutting would wake them up. And I know that a bird would definitely wake them up because they're squawks and it's ongoing. Uh, unless you have a bird like mine that once you just give it attention, it will quiet right down but they are very loud. Now after watching this video, don't think that I'm saying birds are horrible pets to have, don't get them, it's just you need to really take those things into consideration before getting a bird because you can't get a bird and then realise later on that it's too noisy or it's too hard to care for or that it's boring or that it's just too vicious. You do need to take the time out, spend time with it, they are noisy and they aren't cheap to keep over a period of time because you do need to keep that high protein diet up for them. They're actually really cool to keep. They're, they connect with you, they bond with you. They're practically a dog or a child because they're always with you. Uh, I know Chico practically comes with me wherever I go. If I'm in the lounge, I'll bring him in with me. If I'm lying on my bed, he'll sit on my shoulder and nest up to my ear and try and bite out my earring as you've been seeing. Normally he stops that and nuzzles into me but I guess because there's lights on him and there's a big camera he's a little bit on edge so yes. I do hope this video helped you in making a decision whether a bird is the right option for you. If it did please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, go follow my other social media accounts and check out my blog. I have it in the little information box at the top here and yeah Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for more videos, and feel free to turn on the post notifications so you know when I upload a video. Thanks guys!